Hello, beautiful people. Guess who's back with a brand new track? Tried the boss, but there's something you lack? Need help planning your first attack? I hope you brought a delicious snack. Today we'll face a dinosaur. Let's see what Raksha has in store. Ricochet and boots galore. Chains and spikes and so much more. Raksha is unlocked with the mini quest, the Shadow Colossus. Just wiki the rest. Solo or duo is what it requests. So go find a partner and show Raksha who's best. Or solo the boss if you're up for the test. No more running, this boss can't hide. Let's see what we need to go inside. You already know, it's a relatable guide. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Now that MC Ashley has left the building, let's go over the basics. Raksha is a big old honkin' dinosaur straight out of Jurassic Park. I mean, Anachronia. Raksha went to sleep a long time ago in an age far, far away and has recently woken up. Imagine sleeping for ages and then waking up suddenly. You'd be very hangry. Unfortunately for us, Raksha likes to eat people. You'll also see Varan as the keeper in the instance who literally does nothing, but he looks cool so there's that. Now that you know the main characters, let's go over what we're going to bring to the fight. Like all of my relatable guides, I'll be using some basic equipment to show you that anyone can take on Barney. For this guide, we're once again busting out the old sea singer with scavenging and looting. If someone tells you that you can't boss with looting, tell them to eat dirt. I'm kidding. Violence is never the answer. Unless you're face to face with an angry, hungry dinosaur, then violence is highly suggested. You can bring any style here, but I love magic, so here we are again with our tier 85 wand and orb. Just keep in mind that poison doesn't work. As you can see, you can bring pretty basic equipment to the boss fight. The only important thing is to make sure you have some laceration boots and a weapon with halberd range. I use a scythe because scythe is life. Everything else is up to you. Do what you need to feel comfortable. I use a ripper demon, but you can pack yak with pride. Using a yak doesn't make you any less of a legend. No one's going to judge you when you're getting broadcasts every hour because you're definitely going to get so many drops. Now that we know what we're bringing, let's talk about some important information before we face the spicy dino. Like I said earlier, you can solo or duo this boss. The boss scales for group size, so don't even worry about anything. Not that you were worried, because you're a legend. Raksha hits with all three combat styles throughout the whole fight because we wouldn't want the fight to be too easy. If you're providing big booty DPS and duo, you won't have to worry about the melee hit. Just make sure your prayer flicks are on point. Each auto attack has a unique animation for the combat style that we'll go over later, so pay attention and you'll be fine. Or don't pay attention. That's what yaks are for, right? Now let's talk about phase 4 for a bit. The fight changes a little when we get there. If the base stays on the center platform during the auto attacks, Raksha does a tail swipe every two auto attacks instead of the normal four. You can't fool Raksha. If you step off too early to avoid the tail swipe, your team gets stunned and Raksha drops magic bombs on you. This is super annoying, so avoid it at all costs. If you miss the wilderness peaking, this is a great way to relive your glory days. This is where you should stand on the platform and you just walk off and walk back on when you're ready. You can also escape away from the tail swipe if that's what you're into. When Raksha puts up the shield dome to protect yourself, you have to break it down. If you don't, you get a one-way ticket to see your best friend death. If you aren't doing big booty DPS, you can hide behind the pillars and avoid the insta-kill. There's no shame in hiding. Let's look at some mechanics not exclusive to phase 4. If you step away from the tail swipe too early in phases 1 through 3, Raksha rees towards you. Literally just step out of the way. There's also a big magic hurt mechanic. You probably won't see this mechanic because you're an absolute legend who only does big booty damage. This is what happens when you skip your morning coffee and aren't doing big booty DPS. If you can't phase Raksha after the mechanics cycle through, you get the magic ouchies of doom after the second tail swipe. That would be autos, tail swipe, autos, magic bomb, autos, tail swipe, autos, spicy time. During spicy time, you can't really hit Raksha too much. Put on your shield, pray magic, and use defensives. I would use reflect and debilitate, because you have to tank 5 hits. The corruption goes up during this mechanic too, so honestly I would just leave if this happens, but I won't tell you how to live your life. Maybe you like your boss fights spicy. 
Finally, I want to go over the pools. First things first, no matter what happens, do not stand on these pools too long. They hurt and not in the good way. These pools are dirty and need to be what we call cleared, which means killing them. You can use AoE attacks, chins, corruption shot, or blasts, and the likes, but you're a legend. This is what legends do. I said earlier you needed laceration boots and a melee weapon with some reach. When you get to phase 3, you're going to want to put those bad boys on. Pick a side to start on, I start on the left, use blade to dive, and click on one of the pools. Then do the same for the other pools. As long as your target dies, you can keep bladed diving and clear the pools easy peasy lemon squeezy. If you don't clear the pools, Raksha drinks them up and the fight takes a really spicy turn. If things happen and your corruption goes over 40%, I would leave. When in doubt, TP out. Now we're ready. Let's do the dang thing. I use Maniacal for the fight. It's spicier, but we like it spicy. Overload up. Animate dead, do what you have to do, and charge. Like I said earlier, we're going to be doing a lot of perf flicking throughout the fight. This is really important, so I want to make sure that you have it down pat. Let's go ahead and count auto attacks together. 1. Magic 2. Range 3. Magic Four, melee. Now tail swipe. Just step back a little. If you don't step back, you get wiggity whacked. Let's count again. One range, two magic, three melee, four magic. Here come the magic bombs. Anticipate or freedom when you're stunned, then move out of the way. Just keep doing all this until you phase. You will notice that you don't get hit with the same combat style twice in a row if you're basing, so that can help you anticipate the next attack a little bit. When we phase, we're going to use Debilitate and try to avoid the rocks that are falling down around the arena. We don't get crushed, we do the crushing. Phase 2 is the same as Phase 1, with the Balls of Doom added in. After the first cycle of auto attacks, you have to click on the Balls of Doom. If you don't, you get hit out of existence. Sometimes the balls are hidden under Raksha or the pools. Hope you're good at hide and seek. Auto attack animations are simple. When Raksha stands up, you'll get a magic attack. When Raksha goes down to the ground, you get range. The melee animation is a little more subtle, but she kind of throws her shoulder back a little bit and then you get hit. In phase three, we provide our pool cleaning service. Debilitate to help with rocks and put on your laceration boots and scythe. Wait a few seconds, then blade to dive the pools. Your small dinosaur friend will also spawn in this phase. He just wants to give you a hug. The sweet, sweet hug of death. Send him to hell and keep fighting. If you're still getting used to the fight and some pools are left alive after you blade it dive, you can go back and kill them to keep the fight less spicy like I did there. As you can see here, you're going to get 3 or 4 magic bombs depending on how much corruption you have. Just keep walking until Raksha stops spitting out that hot breath. At this point, more dinosaur friends are going to appear. You can either kill them or ignore them. Do whatever keeps you out of death's office. I chose to kill them here just because things were a little spicier than I usually like it. After phasing, we run to the second chamber where we're going to start phase four. You can see here, if you take too long, the pools do start coming back over time. Raksha takes a little sippy sip, a little dranky drink, gets the corruption up, and things get a little hitty hurty, but that's okay. It didn't get too high. When you get to phase four, go to the center platform. This is going to be your home base for the rest of the fight. Raksha does the tail swipe every two auto attacks or magic bombs if you move off the center too early. Move off for swipe move back to home base. This will be super easy for you because you're a straight up legend. After two tail swipes, Raksha hides behind a shield. What a coward. Break down the shield or hide behind a pillar. Don't worry, if you hide, you're not a coward. When the shield breaks, Anima appears on the ground. This is delicious, so run around and pick it up. Then a special action button appears. I moved to the front because, as you saw, I didn't make it to the platform in time and got the magic bombs. Freedom and move, bada bing, bada boom. 
Whenever you're ready to do big booty DPS, use that special action button and take a trip to Crit City. Crit City trick, crit crit city trick, tens, 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 sixteens from us, so a trick. Okay, MC Ashley is gone again. And now you just repeat these steps until Raksha dies or you die. But you won't die because you're literally an unkillable PVM god. Congratulations, you saved the day and killed Barney. Here's a quick summary of the fight. At the top right, you can see the HP thresholds for phasing. This is a pretty simple fight with a few spices added in, but if you prayer flick and clear pools, it'll feel like you're laid out on a beach sipping a cool beverage without a care in the world. And that's it. Now that you're a Raksha spurt, go show Raksha what real DPS looks like. You'll definitely get a few ricochets because this guide increases DPS in Raksha by 42%. And as always, if you found any of this useful or you had a good laugh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.